In this video, we will cover factoring quadratics with higher order thinking conceptual questions. For each question, I'll be asked you in the Edpuzzle video, so please type your answer to the best of what you think it is, and then I will go over the answer just to make sure that we're on the same page and understanding the concept as thoroughly as needed. First, let's discuss problems related just to factoring quadratics without solving. The first question is, how is factoring in multiplying binomials or foiling related? When you are given a factoring problem, such as x squared plus 2x minus 8, the goal when we're factoring is we want to determine what numbers multiply to negative 8 and add to 2. And when I list those numbers, the two numbers that do is 4 and negative 2. So if I have my factors are x and x, it becomes x plus 4 and x minus 2. Now what we can see here is that this would be what we would have if we were foiling. You would go from here to here versus when you factor, you go from the standard form to the factors. So they're kind of inverse processes. And we can use foiling to check our factors. To do so, we would do something like where I multiply, so I have x squared minus 2x plus 4x minus 8, which simplifies to x squared plus 2x minus 8. And since it's the same, we can assume that it checks our answer. So we can use this as a check. The next question says, why can I assume to fill in x and x when I factor in quadratic with an x squared? Whenever I have a quadratic with an x squared plus something x plus something, we automatically assume that it's x with an x. The reason is, we know that to get this first term, it's a result of multiplying the first term in the first parentheses times the first term in the second set of parentheses. And the only way for us to get x squared is to multiply that x times x. So this is, works only because of the fact that this is x squared. If there's something in front, we would have to approach the problem differently. The next problem says, how can you check that your factors are correct? If I have my problem, so let's say I was given the problem of x squared plus 3x minus 10, and I got my answer is x plus 5 times x minus 2. If I want to check, you can use the FOIL method or multiplying binomials. So when I do this, I multiply x times x, which gives me x squared, x times negative 2, which is minus 2x, 5 times x, which is plus 5x, and 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10, and this simplifies to x squared plus 3x minus 10. So since my original problem and my answer are the same, I know that my answer is correct. The next question says, how are the problems similar and different? Now, similarity-wise, we can see that these are both missing a term. They only have two terms. However, the term they're missing is different. Because we know that in a general form, we want it to be something x squared plus something x plus a number. In this case, I'm missing the middle term of 0k. However, in this case over here, I'm missing the last term of plus 0. Now, the difference is, if I want to factor and solve, we have to approach them differently. The one on the left, we can't take out a greatest common factor. So my first step has to be to say k squared plus 0k minus 9. Then I would factor like we normally do. So what's your numbers? Multiply to negative 9 and add to 0. And those numbers would be k minus 3 and k plus 3. On the contrary, if I have the second set of parentheses over here, I don't even need to include that plus 0 yet because we first want to take out our greatest common factor. 
So when I do that, I can take out this greatest common factor of k. So I have a k in front, and I'm left with k minus 9. Now, because there aren't any k squareds left, this would be my final answer. So we can see that depending upon which term is missing, changes how the problem is solved significantly. The final question in this section says, is the answer in simplest form? Now, if we check our work, I agree that this is my answer because we want to know what numbers multiply to 64 and add to 16, and 8 and 8 multiply to 64 and add to 16, so your answer is correct. However, if I'm talking about simplifying, we know that if I have something like 2 times 2, we can write that as 2 squared. Or let's say I have x times x, I can write this as x squared. What we should see here is that these two factors are the exact same. So rather than writing it twice, I could call it x plus 8 squared. So we want to always make sure that we simplify as much as possible to reduce redundancy in our answers and problems. Now let's review some of the key concepts with solving quadratics by factoring. The first question says, why can you assume to set both factors equal to zero? Now, if I were given my problem, so let's say I had x squared um, minus 2x minus 15, and I had equal zero, and I factored it to get x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals zero. What we know from our general math knowledge is that zero times anything else is always equal to zero. So let's say I considered if this were equal to zero, because if this were a zero here, whatever this is, it's always going to equal zero. So I could say, okay, if I have x minus 5 equals 0, I add 5, so I get x equals 5. On the contrary, if I instead consider it as being that I have this term equals 0, like we said before, we have the same process we can apply because we know that whatever this is, times 0 is always going to equal 0. So I could say x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3. So we get our answers here. The reason this works is what is called the zero product property. And the reason is that 0 times anything always equals 0. So as long as we know the factor comes out to 0, the whole answer will be 0 as well. The next question says, why does it have to be set equal to 0 to solve? This idea of the 0 product property is built off of that. In order to be able to factor and be able to apply that property, so like we had in that previous problem, if I had that x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0, we can only go through that process of writing that two equations if I know that this is equal to zero here. So as a result, my original problem always has to be equal to zero. So if x squared minus 2x minus 15 is zero, this has to be zero here every single time in both places to be able to apply this to solve. The next question says, how many answers should you have when you, fact when you solve a quadratic equation by factoring? Now, if I have a problem such as x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0, we know we want to have what multiplies to 9 and adds to negative 10. So if I do that, it will be x minus 1 times x minus 9 should equal 0. When we apply the zero product property, I get x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 9 equals 0. This gives us x equals 1 and x equals 9. Notice here that we have two answers. This is driven by the fact that there's the x squared, which means that you'll always have two answers to your problem. The next question says, can solving it 
by factoring every result in one answer. If I got to a situation where my factors were x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 0, we could rewrite this as x plus 4 squared equals 0. Now when I write an equation, I could say x plus 4 equals 0, so I get x equals negative 4. Now, do I technically read, need to write a second equation? I could. I could say again, because there's 2 here, x plus 4 equals 0 again, and get x equals negative 4, but the answer is the same. So this doesn't even necessarily need to be involved in it. All we really need to know is we got one answer. So while it's not the common situation, it does happen that you could potentially have one answer. The next question says, why are the answers when you solve it by factoring when a equals one opposite signs of the factors? If I have my problem, so I have x squared minus x minus 20 equals zero, and I factor, so I get x minus five times x plus four equals zero, and I write my two equations, so I get x minus five equals zero, and x plus 4 equals 0. When I solve, I have to add 5 to both sides to get x equals 5. And over here, I have to subtract 4 from both sides to get x equals negative 4. Now, it is a valid thing to note the fact that this is a positive 5 and this is a negative 5, as well as this is a negative 4 and this is a positive 4. The signs are opposite because of solving when it equals zero. However, this isn't something we want to consistently apply. You want to make sure that you understand that you write these two equations because when we get to harder problems where there's something other than x squared, we're gonna to need to go through that full process and understand the bigger concept.